BanjoBenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben. Today I'm teaching you mandolin. We're going to learn home on the range. But wait a second. It's more than just home on the range. It's actually how to build solos. And we're going to use home on the range kind of as our test subject here. We're going to take the basic melody and figure out how we make that more robust, how we thicken that up by looking at scales that we can use and the chords that are at our disposal. So it's gonna be a lot of fun today. If you're watching here at banjobandclark.com, you have everything you need right here on this page. But if you're watching somewhere else, like Facebook or YouTube, somewhere like that, I'd love to have you on board and I'll ask you to come over and do that here in just a moment. But for now, let's jump into Home on the Range in the key of C on the mandolin. Let's learn Home on the Range on mandolin in the key of C. Now, a few things about the song's DNA that we need to cover first. It is in the key of C, but it has a few extra chords that we might not be used to playing in the key of C. And this song is very subjective. There are very swingy, jazzy versions that are here, and there are more, and there are more versions um, over here that use more of the standard chords. I'm kind of right in the middle. Um, and so I use a few of those chords that are outside of the normal key of C, like the two major and the uh, four minor, so that would be the D major and the F minor. And we'll cover those as we get there, but we need to understand the theory behind those if we're going to be um, building some beautiful solos. The other thing that might be helpful to know is that it is in 3-4. This is a waltz. I don't know if that helps you or not, but I'm volunteering that information. Let's look at the verse first. And what you'll notice is that some of the notes are highlighted in yellow. Well, those would be the basic melody notes. And we're going to stay very true to the melody. We always want to uh, communicate that melody. And uh, we can get away from it a little bit as we get on through the song, make it a bit more um, colored, colorful. But for now, let's really establish that. And you can see those. So that basic melody is there. But we have some other notes around it, don't we? How do we get those other notes? That's kind of the question of the day. If I can find the basic melody on my mandolin, how do I find some other notes to make it sound really cool? Something beyond just that basic melody. There's a couple things I want to think about today. One is the scale for the key that we're in. We're in C, so let's think about that C major scale. And then I also want to think about which chords are being played at that time in the song. So that's something that you need to find out. So if you're playing this with somebody, it's, it's perfectly le legitimate to ask the question, hey, what chords are you gonna be playing? Like, okay, we have two measures of C, but then where do we go after that? Oh, well, we go to an F chord for two measures. Great, that means that now I know some notes that I can grab to help me solo. Let's, let's take a look at that first line. So we're gonna stick with the basic melody at first. And then right there in measure four, what am I doing there? The, the melody notes up there, but I'm playing some other notes. Well, that's just simply a C chord. So I'm just borrowing from the chord that we're over. Look at here at measure six. What is that? Well, that's just an F major arpeggio. That's, there's an open F chord. I'm, that's what I'm borrowing from. So those, those notes aren't mysterious. I'm not having to invent those. I'm just saying, which chords are we playing? Oh, a C chord. Okay, which... We're going to an F chord. All right, well, I'm just going to borrow some notes from those chords. So this whole first line. When we get to measure seven, what does the melody do? Okay. Well, I'm going to change that melody up just a little bit and work the melody into a C major scale. That's what I do in measure seven. Listen. That's just a C major scale. But doesn't it sound pretty? Measure nine, we have a D minor chord. Okay, that's part of my D minor chord right there. So that's where I get that shape that I find in measure nine. And then I walk it down to a G chord. That whole line. Now we're going back into the, the melody, measure 11. Sounds like this. But we're going to add some harmony notes beneath it. We're also going to bring in some tremolo if you want. So with any of these um, half notes or dotted half notes that we find in the song, like at the beginning of measure 12 there, you can tremolo them if you want, but I'm gonna leave that up to you. I I'm going to. What did I do there in 13, 14? The melody's up here. I'm just walking up the harmony notes 
from one note here to, to one note there. Now, it does go from an F to F minor in 13 and 14. And I'm not playing any notes that um, are that distinguish the F minor on the mandolin here, but our, our backup would be doing that. So the whole line. So there's an F major double stop, and there's an F major double stop. And I just walked it up. Next line. There's the melody. So again, I'm just grabbing some harmony notes beneath it that I think sound good. Measure 16. Doesn't that sound cool? And at the end there, I'm just going to use part of my scale to walk into the melody note that's up top. So this whole line. Okay, now we're going to go into the chorus next. If you're wondering more about how I'm finding these harmonies, that's a great question. And you need to go watch my double stop theory lessons on the, on the site because it's there that we determine how to find these chords, how to grab these double stops, and that will help you out a lot. But just think about what we've done so far. We've played the basic melody and we've used a C major scale to connect some of those melody notes. And then otherwise, we're just grabbing some harmony notes from the double stops of the chords that are being played beneath us by the guitar. So it's not rocket surgery here that we're doing. We're just having to think. We're having to actively think about what's happening with the theory. And that's something that I can help you with. So if you're watching somewhere else beside the website, come on over right now. We'll finish out this lesson. We'll jump into the course and then play it slowly together. If you're already watching on the site, just scroll down, select the next video segment. Mm -hmm.